Hi team, welcome to 10 Talks. Well, what a gift you're gonna get to hear today as Kathy and I talk about a conversation that we had with Cassidy, who is a great, I'd call her a next genner in terms of she was a great athlete. She has played professional as a volleyball player. She is a national champion coach, coaching one year and having that won many national championships playing at Stanford and now really going into her nonprofit work, starting a nonprofit. And she gave us so many words of wisdom. So Kathy, just intro our guests in terms of the conversation that you and I are gonna keep unpacking. Yeah, well, Cassidy Lickman was a, all-American at, uh, at Stanford and, um, you know, then coached there for a year afterwards, played professionally, you know, was on the national team for five years. And so most of that, I mean, I'm going to put air quotes, I guess, around because I think she would, yeah. that she was a great athlete because I think Cassidy would say mm -hmm. her success was that she was a figure outer. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's a word. Okay. A she word. was able to um, analyze the game, figure out where she could be helpful. She understood the game, trailing a mother who was a coach who took her to the gym from the time she could walk. Um, and, and so really had a very successful career because she figured out the game. Um, at, at, as a young player, and that that led to some of the interactions that she had with coaches, which at times were very affirming, um, and at times were very conflicted. So you're joining us in a conversation that I'd say I just like to really kind of title how to figure this out, because that's the journey you and I are on, Kathy, how women win our way. We definitely want to figure it out. And Cassidy was a beautiful example. And thank you for that clarification, because you're right. She really did not start out as a great athlete. In fact, mm -hmm. Every person challenged her on, are you sure that you're going to be able to play at that level? When she went from high school to college, are you sure you're going to be able to play at Stanford? Goes into Stanford. She doesn't know if she's going to be able to do it. What she does know is she wants it. She's curious about it. She's committed to it. And she does the work. And so certainly very, very successful at Stanford. She found a place, a gap really that Stanford needed. And she figured out how to be the solution to that. And then when she wanted to go pro, people were like, I don't think you're big enough, fast enough, good enough, you know, kind of all of those performance barriers that people give us. And she's gone pro and then went into coaching and coached for a year. And, and so you're right. And team, as you listened to our conversation, Kathy and I, again, on the journey for how women win our way, think about you and where you are and really you know, what can you learn from what we're learning on the journey that from all of our coaches and athletes that we've had the gift of speaking to, being authentic has been one of the very, very common pieces of information that people have shared. Well, we know that's really hard to do. I mean, that's great to say, you know, certainly be authentic, be your authentic self, really hard to do. So we'll certainly be on the journey for that. Cassidy was all about the why. She wanted to know and be able to speak to her coaches about why are we doing this drill? And not from a arrogance perspective, but from a curiosity place of, I'm a thinker and I wanna really understand as a thinker, why am I doing this? Because if I understand it, I can commit to doing it and I won't be kind of questioning or using any energy to question because it's clear to me. And so being able to sit down with your coaches, have that communication, tell me why we're doing this. Now, I really got from our conversation, Kathy, that she invested in and she was recruited and chose to play for people that honored that time to sit down, have communication about it, process, talk about it. As you said, Cassidy grew up in the gym, so she was used to being around volleyball, watching volleyball, thinking volleyball. And so she then found coaches that really honored her thinking system. Right, right. And, you know, I think probably something that we all underestimate as coaches and, and maybe just as managers is how affirming it is for um, somebody who plays for us or who works for us to have us honestly ask them, what do you think? What do you think we should do? 
And she says, you know, and she remembers it. I mean, so here's a woman now that played at the elite levels of college, has played professionally, and she remembers that that high school coach that when she was 14 or 15 said to her, well, what do you, you know, how do you think we're doing? What do you think we ought to do? And those who have studied sports psychology more than I have, but will very frequently say agency. That was the word that she used. It was somebody who was giving her as a young person agency to be part of what was happening with the team and on the court. Again, it can't be fake, <laughs> you know. No, and our, authentic, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and our tendency, well, I won't say ours. I won't put you in the same box I'm in. My tendency is I ask the question knowing what I want the answer to be. And then if you don't give it to me quick enough, I'll give it back to you. Okay, here's, here's the answer. Yeah, nah, <laughs> nah. All right. But, but yes, is what can I learn from the players that I have in the gym? How do I give agency to the team. Um, and again, time and place, time and place, time and place. I mean, you know, in the middle of a drill, hey, why are we doing it this way? This doesn't seem to make any sense. Or in the middle of a timeout, eh, probably going to be a difficult time to have that conversation um, with, with your coach. And Cassidy talked about times when she did have it during those times. It's like, I, I, I don't think this makes any sense. Um, but then, yeah, okay, so you have that, that happens in a match, or maybe that happens in, a, in the practice gym. How do you circle back to it so that you and the player both have agency here in trying to understand what you're trying to accomplish? I guess that was something that I, I took from her as a learning moment uh, for, for coaches. So when we think about how women win our way for gaining that agency or discovering that, you talked about confidence, you know, how do you find the confidence to really do that? So I think that's a challenge that we can give ourselves as women is to really be able to honor what's important to us, our curiosity. I think the gift is really the way we bring it or the way we deliver it. Because if we come from a place of defensiveness or disrespect or anything that's somewhat um, divisive, it's not received in that way of learning or moving forward or really for each other. And sometimes when we're not very good at something, we deliver it in a way that isn't really, you know, received in a very great way. So I think as women, we want to really encourage just that start with some grace for yourself. You don't know everything. I loved when Cassidy was talking, she talked about playing for Karch and his first thing that he did was we're all learners here. Number one, including me. And he's as good as, you know, he's the best player in the world. And he said, I'm here to learn. So what I find when I listen to that is I'm here to learn about you. Maybe I do know a lot about volleyball or if, if I'm the volleyball coach, I don't know that much about you. Like you're an expert on you. I'm an expert on me and on whatever skills I have. Let's bring all of our expertise together and learn about it rather than try to be over each other or dominate or you've got to do it my way. I think that's a real changing factor in this gen and really our new world is that we're not doing it my way. It's very much a collaboration of let's figure out the best way, what strengths do you have? That's new learning for everyone, especially, and Cassidy brought this up too, another beautiful part of the conversation. When you ask, how can we get coaches to coach differently? And she said, well, coaches coach according to what they've been coached. And we know that. So if the coaches are coaching according to who coached them 10 or 15 years ago, the world is a completely different place. And if that coach isn't going to start with the courage to change and to find out how to be about the culture, how to be about the human skills, how to care about them authentically individual, in, individually, and how to really be open from communication to express my why, I don't think there's going to be much success on the court or in life. Yeah, and you look at, you know, I look at uh, uh, somebody's, and, and maybe this is how we look at ourselves and stuff, but your coaching tree, if you will. Yeah. Um, you know, just just uh, last night, Don Chandel, who was a longtime volleyball coach uh, and actually the father of volleyball in the upper Midwest, he passed away at 92. And all of the 
conversations about his passing are about the legacy that he left of the hundreds of people who he coached who are now coaches. <laughs> so, um, you know, that that is a love of the sport. Um, you, you're, you know, in other words, you're giving people not only skills, but you're giving them a passion to do what you do. Um, and, and I think for, for women, particularly as we're, as we're transitioning to the next generation of coaches. And I will say to you, Carlette, I think we're transitioning due to the pandemic. I think we may be transitioning a little faster than we would have been before. Um, we're seeing here, um, you know, uh, just a frightening, I'll, I'll be frank, a frightening number of resignations of coaches at the end of the season that are just like, okay, we got through COVID. I don't wanna do this anymore. And some of them are being told, you don't want to do this anymore, or you're not going to be doing it anymore here. Um, and so there is uh, going to be a significant changing of the guard, if you will. And there are opportunities for people who have had positive coaching experiences now to come and, as young women, take those skills into the gym. And I think the work that we're doing is so critically important. Many of those young women who've had these positive experiences have been coached by men. That's fine. It's great that they had a positive experience. And they there are many wonderful male coaches out there. These women now need to transition into leadership roles on their own as women leading women, or in some cases, women leading men. And so this journey is part of the discovery processes are what are the nuances, not about passing and setting or shooting a free throw or, you know, training a training a sprinter, uh, training a softball player, but, but about how does leadership look different in, a, in, in, in a gendered world, which we are still living in. Well, and Kathy, you bring up a great point of those that have had great coaches. I know I'm in my career because of the coaches that weren't great for me, right? So, you know, I had some really negative coaching experience. I had some fabulous coaches as well. And so I'm very grateful for those. The ones that weren't positive for me challenged me to want to be that change. And that's why I'm in the career that I'm in as I was like, boy, if I would have had a life coach when I was an athlete somebody that was caring as much about my life as they were about my performance, I feel like I would have had a much different journey and be a much different person. So I know from my experience in terms of just this journey you and I are on as we compare our own stories is that I'm actually driven by the fact of what was missing is mm -hmm. actually what drove me to figure out how to do all of this. And that's the gift I'm giving back to sport is really what I wish I would have had. So that's another way that we can really encourage women to get out there. And if they didn't have a good experience, say, well, be the change, right? Like, how can you do it that? Differently? Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, Based on no. what you, you learned, how can you do it differently so that you no. can really keep women in athletes, keep girls in sports, really engage that. And so I want to challenge all of us to do that and to really stay with our passion. I know sports is in my blood. I didn't want to leave it, but I also didn't want to be the only image that I had of what a coach was like. And mm -hmm. also raising three daughters, I, I wanted time with them, right? So that conflict, I didn't have a model of how to do it. So I just invented my own from a sports life coaching perspective. And so what are the things I love and how can I do it? So I, I believe it can be done. And I believe we can do it inside coaching as well. If we really mm -hmm. have that agency, to say what matters to us, what's important, talk to other people so that we're really have a support team and let them know what you want and say, how can we all do this together? You and I were talking before our conversation started just about the champion of the championing change. And you saying, you know what, we're going to have to collaborate in a bigger way rather than everybody just kind of doing their own thing and hoping that things get noticed or hoping that change happens. We want to use our voice, our passion, and our commitment to really step into the change that matters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's really interesting um, in terms of your journey of saying, all right, 
this wasn't satisfying. I think I can do it better. Um, you're much braver than, than I was at the time because when I finished competing, there was only one thing that I knew I didn't want to do, and that was coach. And it was because the negative experiences that I had with the, my last few coaches were traits that I recognized in myself. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to be as bad at it as these folks. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, and I remember, you know, one of the things when I did then end up, I needed a job. And so yeah. it's like, okay, I'm going to go to law school, but I need a job. And so I got a job coaching and I, I pledged that I was never going to go into a locker room after a match. And I didn't for the first five years that I coached. And, and it was because I was afraid of myself. Mm -hmm. And I knew I would go in there after we won and everything was going to be hunky-dory. And I was going to go in there after I lost and potentially throw a fit. And that the athletes would feel like they were valued based on whether they won or lost. And I didn't want that. And so it's like just so you know, there's times you stand outside the locker room and they're celebrating and you want to be in there with them, high-fiving and hugging and everything else. And it's like, no, let them know you're not coming in. It's their space. Um, anyway, it was kind of one of the things that got me through the wormhole of, you know, can I do this? Can I do this differently from an emotional control standpoint? Those who played for me in the early days would say, uh, Kathy, mm -hmm not so good, but I was trying. <laughs> well, Kathy, you bring up the next component for how women win our way, really how humans win is training, coaching, investment, you know, like we're, we're not going to naturally be good at all this stuff. I think Cassidy spoke beautifully about naturally we're going to be what we've been coached to do. And so, I mean, I did go right into coaching. It's all I knew. So it was like, okay, I, you know, was a swimmer, I'm going to start being a swim coach. I mean, I was coached oh, by great people. Yeah. And so, you know, I did go right into coaching and, and figure that out. So what's, what's really empowering about the gift that COVID has given us, as you spoke earlier about this change happening very quickly, about the resignations and that kind of change is that I believe it's really awakened us. It's woken us up from the past of how everybody else did it and really challenged us to say, What's the healthiest way to do it? How do we really honor who we are as humans, our hearts, our spirit, our home life? I mean, the things that really matter, our friendships, our personal lives, all that good stuff, and still really get to be competitive and, and get to have that. So when I listen to it, I think it's definitely about learning that we've got to learn to be different. We've got to take on the challenge. We've got to understand we're not going to be great at it. We got to find people that are and get some training. I mean, it's that investment in ourselves to be better. Yeah, well, and also just, uh, yeah, and, and uh, you know, saying what you've said, absolutely, here in terms of whether we want to call it emotional intelligence or whatever we want to call it. I mean, Cassidy was a questioner and she's curious. Mm -hmm. And so she wants to know why. And so in Cassidy's situation, it's, it's when do you ask the why? Mm -hmm. um you know and and so, you know um and I, I think again she was very successful as a player and as an athlete so most of the time she was right mm -hmm. about when but there's going to be times where you have a coach where hey curiosity and questioning is going to have to happen in a very careful way right, right. <laughs> um, we're a boss. Uh, you know we're not just talking about yeah. coaches I mean we're talking yeah. about a boss as well right you know? right and it's like well, what's the right time to say hey can we talk about this strategy or can we talk about what we're doing here and then also can you hear it Mm -hmm. um, I, I remember my best player coming in in the summertime uh, and just saying, hey, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm working on our serve receive for next year. She says, okay, well, let me look at it and stuff. And so I showed her the formations and she went, that's not going to work. I'm like, why not? She says, well, you've got, you, you've got me receiving next to so-and-so and we don't like each other. I mean, I'm like, who cares whether you like each other or not? You're on the court passing. She's like, it's not going to work, Kathy. You know, we're not going to protect each other. We're not going to be in there for each other and everything. And I was like, oh, please. We went with my serve receive. I was the head coach. 
Um, we started the season poorly, much poorer than we were as a team. I switched to serve receive and we ended up having a very successful season. So, <laughs> you know, but I still don't want to go with the, hey, we all have to get along every time right. to be able to, <laughs> to make things work. But in that case, she was absolutely right. This, you know, this, so, so I guess, yeah, learning to listen. When do we try it? When do we get out of it? I, I tell these stories because I think sometimes when we get talking about life as we would like it to be, or when we get to tell our own stories, <laughs> we're our own heroes in our own stories because we hopefully like ourselves, um, you know, and, and it's frequently is a, is a much more tortured path uh, than just a straight line to figuring out when you listen and when you question and when you shut up and, and all of the, all of that. Well, Kathy, I think the number one thing you and I are learning on this beautiful journey of how women win our way is that we're all figuring it out and, you know, we're going to fail. We're going to be successful. We're going to be the hero of our story one minute and we're going to be, you know, crawling under the blankets the next, like, what the heck did I just do? So welcome to the human experience. Welcome, you know, to the journey of it. And I love being in a space of learning to where we're receiving all of that information as the gift of learning. What can I learn from it? How can I go forward? And Team, we just want to give you that um, on this journey of how women win our way. Embrace the journey, embrace the failures, embrace the things you're good at, like figuring it out. Have some conversations. That's what Kathy and I are really enjoying is just speaking to people and saying, hey, tell us what you're learning. Tell us what's going on. We know change is happening. Let's capture those conversations. Love to have you join us. You can go to howwomenwin.com. That's howwomenwin.com. We've got a survey with all of our questions. Love to hear from you. And Kathy, as always, thank you so much for this conversation all about change and uh, figuring it out. And team, it's up to you. Go out this week, be the champion for your change and figure out how you want to win your way. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks, Carlotte.